there's been a growing contention between cloud code and open code. If you zoom out and look at so many other coding tools that all solve similar problems in terms of AI coding agents, cloud code seems to stand out as the most favorite tool, even with growing competition with open code. Today, we're going to analyze the AI coding industry and ask why tools like cloud code and open code matter and see the progression of how AI coding tools got to where they are today. We'll also look at Anthropic's ban on third-party use cases and what this really speaks about the AI industry overall. Welcome to Caleb Bright's Code, where every second counts. One of the first attempts made in AI coding was GitHub Copilot, which was powered by GPT-3 LLM, likely post-trained with coding data called Codex. Back then, AI coding was mostly a glorified code completion tool like this. But it did blow many developers' minds because it really set into people's minds of how AI could really change coding after all. But as much as GitHub Copilot was impressive in just suggesting the right code, it had little to no effect on how work was done for developers. In other words, there was a productivity gain, but not a complete change in the developer's workflow. Fast forward to about four years later, Cloud Code was announced. And during this four year leading up to Cloud Code, there have been many attempts and form factors of how AI could exactly fit into developers' workflow. For example, GitHub Copilot acted like an assistant where it helped you save time from entering code, but you still had to do the work yourself in writing the code. In other words, in order to develop code, you still did all the work in looking through the documentation, translating business requirements into architecture decisions, and using the IDE to develop code. And in this flow, Copilot only helped you in the last stage of developing code while it desperately tried to infer requirements from the written code. Then we had other iterations, but in different form factors. Cursor and Winserve emerged as one of the early players who, well, created a fork of IDE so that it allowed people to use Cursor and Winserve to essentially delegate work for AI to complete. And for the first time, developers were able to work one layer up in the stack by translating a business requirement into a well-written prompt for AI to complete. Other tools like Klein and Rue that existed in a slightly different form factor as extensions also fit into this category where developers took turns back and forth to get the work done. But it wasn't until AI operated in the terminal that we saw a complete change in the workflow. One of the first prime examples of this is Ader, where instead of being an IDE fork or just extensions, Ader allowed developers to work in a separate environment outside of their IDE. In other words, working in terminal bifurcated work in a way where AI didn't really impose on developers' IDE, but instead it allowed an alternative stream of how work could be done. Even though Ader gained mass popularity among more technical users due to its complicated user interface, they charted a direct path towards cloud code eventually. That's not to say Ader is a bad tool. They were extremely good in terms of diff added accuracies, token efficiencies, context management, and precision. But in my opinion, Ader remained as a task completion tool rather than being something much bigger than that, which is where we come to Cloud Code. Cloud Code, despite being the same form factor as Ader, really changed things, and here's why. Not only was Cloud Code just downright a solid product that just worked, but Cloud Code was a lot more approachable as a user with a variety of other tools like MCP, tools, and all the bells and whistles that you might want from a terminal based AI coding agent. While Ader allowed for a more precise work to be done with cloud code, developers started to think project-wide rather than module or task-wide. And this transition started to reshape our view on how work could really be done differently with AI. And for the first time, instead of bringing AI into how we like to get work done, we started to change our work to fit to how AI gets work done. We started using Claude.md and Skills.md that essentially pulled out tribal knowledge outside of developers' minds into a well-defined document. And this very practice alone is valuable enough to change the industry upside down. What I mean by that is, most people criticize AI adoption not because technology won't be ready, but because organizations won't be ready because so much of their process is not defined, not documented, but lives in people's minds as tribal knowledge. 
So implementing AI on top of hidden tribal knowledge can only take you so far. But as AI started to really draw these things out and changed developers to start dabbling into project management rather than just pure software development, AI adoption in the coding industry really started to change. Another perspective to keep in mind is when it comes down to cost. I broke down the difference between API pricing and subscription model in my previous video, but with CloudCode, people could use their own subscription pricing with Anthropic to use high performing models like Opus 4.5 without worrying about the racking up API costs since Anthropic practically subsidizes subscription pricing to have more people hooked on their system. Well, that is until Anthropic banned third-party applications from tapping into this subsidized pricing channel, but forced other applications to use the API pricing instead, which is a much more expensive way. And this caused a lot of contention between users since they felt like Anthropic enforced vendor lock-in when it comes to pricing and thought that subsidizing should also apply to applications outside of the Anthropic ecosystem. While I tend to lean more into the camp where this was well within the rights for Anthropic to ban third-party apps to use their already subsidized subscription plan, we haven't really talked about why OpenCode is the cause of all of this controversy. OpenCode, unlike CloudCode, is an open source application, which means the public could potentially contribute to shaping AI agents that is similar to CloudCode. And I was frankly impressed by the depths of its features and capabilities, as well as many free models it offer out of the box. But this debacle really does point to a growing contention in the AI industry. Clearly, Opus 4.5 is the holy grail of all coding agents, but price sensitivity among coding agents point to an extremely high competition in the application layer. So we asked the age old question, does the competitive edge come from a better model with better pricing or better application and better LLM wrapper. And meanwhile, Anthropic is also fighting competition in the LLM stack from OpenAI's coding models like GPT 5.2 Codex and open models like GLM 4.7, Minimax M 2.1, and more. Another interesting on this is when it comes to inference speed. Most notably, OpenAI's partnership with Cerebrus, where some people are suspecting token speed up to four digit tokens per second. This kind of speed could make a huge impact since making three iterations faster could be a preferred method of getting work done rather than one iteration that takes a lot longer. So what does all of this amount to? The cloud code debacle with open code isn't just about pricing dispute by gatekeeping third-party apps, but it's really a stress test in the AI coding landscape. We're seeing a battle in people's preference when it comes to LLM model layer or the application layer, and these are colliding and developers are now in the position to now choose whether they stick around for the better model or better application when it comes to how work gets done. As of now, developers, including myself, are using multiple tools at once, depending on the complexity of the problem and the cost but we are seeing a ripple effect of how 2026 really could be the year where we start to consolidate on all these LLM wrappers and the AI agents that only a few strong remains, given that so much is at stake. What do you think?